I'd like to call this meeting to order. Let's have a moment of silence, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we please have the roll call? Mr. Cowguire? Ms. Darmo? Here. Mr. Dovey? Here. Mr. Jen Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Here. Ms. Karamanujian? Here. Mr. Litwack? I know he's here. Mr. Here. McLaughlin? Something's here. I got you. I got you. And got you, Steve, as well. Uh, Ms. Teresa Keeley? Here. You have a quorum? Thank you. May we please have the reading of statement of adequate notice? Notice this meeting pursuant to the Open Public's Meeting Act has been given as follows. Advertising the Browning County Times and Courier Post on 8 12, 2021. Posting the school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on August 12, 2021. Sending a notice to the Browning County Times and Courier Post on August 12, 2021. Following written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on August 12, 2021. And posting notice electronically on the district website as well on August 12, 2021. Thank you. May we have a motion for the approval of minutes of July 14th, 2021 regular session and executive session meeting and July 21st, 2021 regular meeting and executive session meeting. So moved. Second, Phil. Was the camera in the first one? So um, Bob was the first one, Bob Dovey and Phil was the second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries, thank you. Accept reports of board secretary and treasurer for June 2021, which are in agreement, non-applicable, applicable, approved July 21st of 2021. Community liaison reports. Is there a member from Riverside? Okay, the Delanco PTO. Okay. DISA Recreation and or Township Committee. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to our meeting this evening. Uh, we look forward to a nice, quick, seamless meeting and we appreciate all who have are in attendance today. Uh, we will move this forward to public comment on agenda items. see any comments or anybody up and I did not see anything on the um, form as well the online form so we will now close public comment and we will now move forward to superintendent's report Mr. Mersinger all right thank you Mrs. Kamenugian and uh, before I start my report I just I do want, want to make a comment about the PTO and say thank you to the PTO for uh, what they what they did uh, last week for the Meet the Principals event, uh, in particular Rebecca Sharma, as the new president, and the entire PTO for coordinating the Mr. Softy Truck as part of our Meet the Principals event. So, thank you to the PTO all the time. They they are constantly doing great things for our students and our staff members. And I know last year was a different year for everybody, including the PTO. This year we're looking at at being more of a typical year for them when it comes to their events. God willing, when it comes to the, the health issue that, that's still taking place out in the world. So thank you to the PTO. Uh, and so now um, superintendent's report. Uh, a motion is requested to, uh, to approve the following items, letters A through C. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Cameron. Bob, was that you second it? Yes. Thank you. Questions and, and or comments? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 O opposed? Abstain? 
Motion carries, thank you. Thank you. Instruction and program, confidential classifications and placements, exhibit G. Budget and finance. A motion is requested to approve the following line items, A through P. Are there any questions? Uh, I need a motion. So moved. Thank you, Bob. I, I move. Uh, second, thank you, Harry. I move that. I'm sorry, Harry, we're unable to understand you. I just said I move oh. to accept the motion for budget and finance, A through P. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? I have a few questions. Is everything, uh, Steve, is everything that is there, is that all budgeted for? Or are there any surprises in there? Yeah, the, uh, last week I kind of presented that. Um, can I do a quick look again? The other district placements, I believe you asked the same question last month. Yeah, and, I do. <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, I welcome it, everyone, because what I'm doing is keeping a spreadsheet and, and adjusts every week right now because we keep getting new, new contracts, you know, and so forth. All I can say is it's been, it's been pretty close to budget. Um, when I say that is we've lost, like some students on, on the other district placements have not come to fruition and others have come to fruition that were not budgeted. So I'll keep the board updated every month. But if you look back at the presentation, which is still in the, in the public agenda part, and you look at slide, slide three, that's an update of our out of district tuition costs um, as of a week ago, pretty much. So I do update that. So is everything budgeted? It's within the world of reasonability right now with the budget, I would say. But obviously, we're still getting contracts. Uh, hopefully, we'll have more of a better sense in September of exactly where we're at. Great. Thank so you. Very does, much. does that make sense? Like, Makes lots of sense. Thank you very much. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Um, I just, uh, I, I, maybe I'm blanking on this letter N, the IDEA grant application. Uh, this is for preschool that we don't have currently, and we're looking for a grant from them so to be able to start the preschool, correct? Or is there more to that? No, it was just simply, I think it was the last slide of the presentation. If you look back at it, it was just simply some funds we received under the American Rescue Plan. Oh, that's right. Board. Okay. All right. And I think the name of it threw me off. Thank you. And we just yeah. budgeted exactly the same way we budgeted the IDEA grant. Gotcha. Thank you. Anybody else? This would be a roll call vote, please. Ms. Darmo? Aye. Mr. Dogan? Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Karen Mnuchin? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Teresa Keeley? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Operations and facilities, report exhibit U, policy, there is no report. Personnel, I'm requesting a motion to approve the following line items, letters A through O. Motion. Thank you, Cameron. I'll second to Phil. Thank you, Phil. This is also a roll call. Oh, questions or comments? Uh, Vera Dharma with a question. Mm -hmm. um, I know that one of the contracts states, you know, there are certain travel expenses will be covered, certain membership dues will be covered. If a board member would want to see an end of year statement for all travel expenses and membership fees, would that be provided to the board member? Are you asking for an account detail? Yes, like an end of year itemized travel expense um, document, membership fee document. Would that be provided if requested by a board member? Wait, is that one of these? 
Are you, is this pertaining to anything through letters A through O? Um, it, it pertains to letter A because um, Stephen Burns, this contract as is normal will include some travel expenses, membership fees. So okay. I'm just wondering if- um, That should know, have been request, that should have been asked during public comment on an agenda item. Um, um, we can then, re, we can now revisit, well, we can table this and then vote on what's here currently at this time and speak on it during public comment on non-agenda items, if you don't mind. Just to move but this. This is an agenda item, right? Right. So you could have. So this comment should have been brought up during public comment on an agenda item. Because I'm not, it's not the public. I'm a member the of the. I'm, I'm a member of the board. I don't. I'm not a member of the public. We're voting oh. on this. Questions or comments, and I have a question. All right. So let me um, just interject here. Um, I think just procedurally, what we should do. It's not um, an. It's not a question that is directly pertaining to an agenda item. It's sort of an ancillary question, though I, I understand where you're coming from. I suggest actually that it come up during uh, new business if any board members is seeking any additional information. Right now you have a motion pending and all of your questions should be about the particular items that are the subject of the motion. Okay, so in that case, I'll just abstain from letter A, uh, Mrs. Garen. Or Ms. Gary? You can vote however you see fit to vote. Okay, if I had the information, I might vote differently, but okay, thank you. So, um, Marissa, if I may comment? You may, if it's one, it one of these to, items. <laughs> when it comes to item A, just for the, the sake of the board and the public, uh, this item was actually already board approved prior to Stevens starting in his position. Uh, this is a revision of his contract based on what the county required uh, to have language in there that was changed. Uh, that language does not relate to travel expenses or anything related to that. That was already in the contract that was previously approved a couple of months ago. So that's that's just an important fact for everyone here. And then another thing I wanted to say is uh, there was a tremendous amount of work done this summer when it comes to hiring a lot of new team members. You see a lot of new names there. Uh, you see the Delanco certified staff assignments list that I provided to the board. I'm also going to be providing a similar list to our, our families through Blackboard Connect so that everybody's aware of all the new names that are there on our staff roster because we have a number of new additions. So I just want to take a moment to welcome the, the, the new members of the Delanco team, and that's Stacy, Rebecca, Annette, Kristen, Emily and uh, Jennifer at this time. So uh, I appreciate all of those being on our agenda tonight. Absolutely, thank you. Okay. I'd like to say one thing, Marissa. I'm sorry, Phil, go ahead. Okay, uh, just, I just wanted to say thank you to, for Holly Smith for being our school nurse. I do appreciate her service. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, roll call vote, please. Ms. Darmo. I'll abstain from letter A and vote yes, B through M. Mr. Dobie. Yes to all. Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Ms. Karen Eugene. Yes. Mr. Litwack. Yes, but I spotted a a, Mr. a uh, period that wasn't in there, so I don't know. Mr. Litwick, I'm sorry. No, you're, yes. You're in a vote. You're, we're just voting. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, I don't know if I should vote for I since there's not a period at the end and how that could influence if butterflies' wings will change the universe. I'll just vote yes and be quiet. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Teresa Schiele? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Board liaison reports. Uh, Riverside, Mr. C. Jenkins. Thank you, Marissa. Last mm -hmm. Thursday, Riverside Board met. Our meeting lasted till, I don't know, approximately quarter of eight o'clock. Uh, it was Miss Jody Lennon's last meeting, so we're all sad to see Jody go. Uh, uh, 
me too, even though I've only been on Riverside Ford for a year, I did meet Miss Lennon a number of years ago and uh, she's always been a good friend to everyone on the Lancos board as well as everyone definitely on Riverside Ford. But uh, nothing spectacular was passed at the meeting or anything. So it was uh, business as usual. That's all I got. Okay, thank you. NJSBA and BCSBA, Mr. Litwack. Yes, uh, um, I reported last week, but for those, there may be new people out there, I'll um, kind of refresh. Uh, the meeting that we had was for counting planning for next year and to try and stay up on contemporary issues. And uh, we we're going to go with a hybrid agenda and any of the board members can attend these, any of our board members. Um, but it looks like we're looking at Thursday, September 23rd to deal with SEL. Uh, Tuesday, December 14th, it's the foundations that's part of the training, I believe. Uh, Thursday, February 17th, diversity. Tuesday, March 22nd is eighth grade dialogue. And Tuesday, uh, Thursday, May 26th, uh, will be about social media. And um, the, count, the countywide, they're called uh, CAL meetings, the uh, county statewide meetings are every other, uh, every two weeks on a Monday. And um, there was problems with the technology getting in. And the other thing is that in um, for the twice a year, it's a delegate assembly. Uh, the school boards association is a very democratic process and it might be helpful even like I'm the delegate, but one person can always come, they're non-voting and they can see how it operates. However, more than likely, it'll either be hybrid or Zoom by then, it would look like. But it's usually at uh, Mercer uh, County College. And um, it's from every school board in the state. They send a delegate, and the issues are done and through the. And this is where laws are brought forward, you know. Uh, rules changes, they're debated, and it's a process that uh, is very interesting to see how democratic I was. I've been pleasantly surprised over the last seven, eight years to see how that happens. It's a, uh, you know, a democracy. We're an elected school board, and we represent our town, basically. So that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Township Committee, Mrs. Tersis Keeley. Uh, yeah, there is a meeting on Monday and um, some highlights that um, would affect our community would be that there's an Eagle Scout project proposal that TJ Fenimore did, which was really cute. He's gonna be sprucing up the entry to West Ave trails and highlighting the Blue Trail, which is Cool. So maybe some students would be able to use that. Um, just a higher level note, they did mention that if you want to vote by mail in the upcoming primary that you have to request a ballot, it's not going to be automatically sent to you. So just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. And then um, the Township Committee did decide to hold Zoom meetings for September because of an increase in COVID cases. Um, they said that the or Mayor Templeton said the last update he got was 50 to 80 new cases a day. Um, so they will be um, all remote meetings for the foreseeable future. And then there is going to be a meeting on 913, which um, some interesting topics are coming up. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew about it. One is for community input on plans for 200 Ash Street, which is the old sale factory. Um, they want to hear from the community on how we think it should be used um, now that the town owns it. So uh, I would encourage you to attend that if you have opinions. And then more info will be provided at the 913 meeting about the Cannabis Advisory Board. I know that we received a request um, to have somebody from the Board of Ed um, join that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where we are with that process, but there's gonna be more information about forming that at the next meeting on 913. 
That's all I have. Thank you. I, I have a question. This, this, the um, what you had mentioned the topic before the last topic. The uh, two hundred Ash Street community plans. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I guess that's, I didn't hear the whole thing. Oh, I didn't hear um, what you had mentioned. So the township bought the factory that was, a, first it was a shoe factory, then it was a sale factory. Now the township owns it and um, seems likely that they're gonna tear down the building. Uh, and they're, the idea was to have it be a park or something. So um, they want community input on how we want to use it. Okay. and they. There was talk about them buying the building across, right across from that. Yeah, no. The low, news. those low buildings. No news that, since that then. That is not. And what did did they mention anything about what's going on with um, whatever is being built behind, next to, alongside, behind the municipal building? What's the status of that, and what does that entail? There was is no that update on that. Anything that you meeting. have knowledge of, Catherine? Okay. No, there's. And I don't know. But, uh, and for the last thing, I mean, it seems if, if you are our representative, unless you don't want to do that, that, you know, I would just as soon have you be the person doing that, being the school board representative. That's, that's my comment on that last. For the cannabis. For the words, um, well, you, yeah, I mean, that's what. I know Steve is actually going to already be on the Cannabis Advisory Board as a member of the Historic Preservation Society. Maybe. So, I'm not really settled. I think there are some other history board members. Yeah, it's interested. potentially. So, and, and so, uh, one, one more uh, thing. As, as Jennifer mentioned, they're someone, really total interested in joining the, that committee. So, I'm not sure what. As, what as someone uh, on my age who lived through the 60s, I think that having it, it be the, what was it, historical preservation is somehow weirdly apropos. <laughs> sure. Just a comment in passing. <laughs> I know that. That's history. Um, but yes, if no, I could also represent the, the school board on that committee if no one else wants yeah, to do I, it. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Like I said, it, it, my suggestion was Catherine, since she's our delegate to the town council, if she doesn't want to, if Steve wants to, unless anyone else objects or they want to, we could settle this right now, can't we? So I, I nominate so Steve I, for that yeah, position. Let me just interject. Um, really, the, the board president should be making these designations to a point. Um, and presenting them to the board for a vote. It's not on your agenda. Um, I would bring this issue up under new business and then decide if you want to put it on a future agenda, unless there's something time pressing that necessitates you do it today. And on that question, I defer to the board president. Um, I'm not sure if this is a time sensitive thing. Did they say about the cannabis? Um, what they said was they were going to make appointments on September 13th, or at least they were going to discuss it. I'm not sure if they're going to vote. They they're going to talk it. about everybody who, who nominated themselves and then make a decision on how many people need to be on the board. And um, so we should have a candidate basically by then. It, it sounds like it is time sensitive. I don't, okay. I mean, if um, let's table this for old business, because we did bring this up last week and the week prior about that this was a, something that we were going to discuss, and let's talk about it then. Let's get through this, um, which literally it's like in two minutes, but um, let's get through this and then we can discuss it then. Okay. Um, is there any old business? No. Okay, so now we're back into to new business. <laughs> <laughs> Just as quickly as we came out, we're going right back into something. First and foremost, um, I have um, Vera's letter A that she wanted to discuss a little bit more if she was interested in providing or receiving a bit more information. 
Yeah, I have, um, I was just wondering if board members can request at the end of the year, total travel expenses and total membership fees for any member of the administration. Is that a yes Why? or no? Mrs. Garen? I just, or Ms. Garen? Board members Why? can request uh, any amount of school. information. But yeah. for, I mean, a couple of things. If, um, if, if the, board, the board as a whole can decide whether or not those reports are generated. The business administrator and the superintendent will generate whatever reports they're directed to, but a majority of the board has to feel that they have value because the more requests we make of them, the more work it generates, the less they're paying attention to education. And this issue comes up frequently with many boards. This is not unique to your board. So if you're requesting ongoing information or if you're requesting specific reports, if they are time consuming to assemble, I would suggest that the full board discuss and decide if that's something that is useful to them. Um, something that's um, time consuming to pull together that would take you away from handling what you would normally need to do. Mr. Burns, did you have to itemize travel expenses and things like that in your other district? I can't hear you. You have to. You're muted. You're muted. He was struggling with it. Oh. I have a VPN and that causes me to not be able to switch windows quick enough while I'm trying to take notes as well as do that, you know, talk. Uh, I've never been asked in, in previous districts to itemize any type of travel expenses. Um, you know, most administrators go to, they have their dues with their, their, their association, which would be like New Jersey ASBO or New Jersey PSA for, um, you know, for principals or, you know, New Jersey ASA for superintendents, um, which are generally pretty basic, as well as maybe a local chapter of those groups. Um, workshops, they're usually talking one workshop a year for, for business administrators, talking about New Jersey ASBO, which is the bigger one, which is probably about 400 bucks. And you're talking about, um, Couple of workshops throughout the year that a business administrator needs to keep their QPA. So you're talking probably 100. I mean, these are these are not major expenses. Is what I'm saying. Um, superintendent, same thing. It's not like anyone's in this district is going to any federal, not federal, nationwide conferences. So I don't think there's any real need to, uh, to itemize it. But I've never had that request before. I agree. I don't is think that it's that in something caps? we need to do. Is it encapsulated in the audit? The, the numbers, the information is encapsulated within. It's nothing that has to be struck out. I agree with Phil. There's no reason to, to do that. And, and it, it, travel is minimal now anyway. It's, it's virtual it's Zoom meetings. And if we don't have a, a, a BABS that's up on what's going on and build, we're at a, a, a lack and a loss and to the hills. Um, in my district, anytime a teacher wants to travel anywhere, we always have to fill out a form. We always have to get approval. We, we, do, have we do vote on school. that. We're we do have board. that itemized in their personnel and we do vote on that. This is something totally separate that you're requesting. By statute, any expense over $150 travel expense, above $150 has to be board approved. So if I go to New Jersey ASBO, it has to be board approved. We, um, we've already done that, and you've, you've probably not seen it on the agenda for a while because it just hasn't happened for a very long while because of the current circumstances. But I will say this, you know, just to respond to, to Vera and also what Amy said, that I think it's important for the board to understand that when one board member wants a certain thing, you know, sometimes it's quick and easy and sometimes it's not. It, it, and I do think it's sometimes very important for the whole board to provide feedback on what should or should not be done. So we've seen this happen a handful of times recently where if one board member says here, I think we should do this, there's nothing wrong with that if the full board or a majority of the board would like to do that. But I feel like sometimes as administrators, like Amy was saying that, you know, if we're, if we're basically given a directive by individual board members, uh, that, that is not something that we see as Appropriate. So it's important for us to serve at the will of the board. 
Well, I see it as micromanaging. And I also, Vera, we are a school board, not a school. We have different um, ways of operating. And, you know, you've been on the board over a year and a half, Vera, and some of these things we keep telling you and you keep, it's like, here's my question, I guess. What are you trying to accomplish? It well, sounds I already, as if I already you're have intimating that something. something like, wait a minute, let me finish. You're intimating that something something is going on that isn't going on, as far as I can see, and the people have been on the board a long time. And it's really um, something that is, is not necessary, it's not needed. And the calls, the many different ways that board members and other people have tried to explain things to you so, to make it easier for you to function as part of the board, you either intentionally or unintentionally ignore. I, I think you're trying to do your best. I'm trying but, to do my know, best, which is um, why I'm very appreciative. I'm very appreciative that finally the board will get a look at the treasurer's report. And Stephen Burns did send me an email that the treasurer's report will be included in the packet for, um, for our viewing, which I never yeah. saw before. And that's another new business I have, which is um, we're gonna, uh, Mr. Burns said he wanted to contact Barclay because they, we've uh, had them before. And I checked that the last time we had Barclay as our insurance broker of record was 2016, five years that's, ago. So well, I'm wondering, that's completely different. Insurance broker of record is completely different. Okay, so you're the, the bonded, you're the, no, I'm doing financial oversight. So I'm wondering when was the last not time to administer this? Okay, school. I'm it's going to oversight. You're trying I'm to going to mute everybody school. if we can't speak in turn. So let's take turns in speaking and not over speak. Okay. If I you may. may, you'd like to speak, yes. You know, thank you. Yeah, because some of the reasons that, you know, it, it doesn't matter the changes that are done, Vera, if no matter what, you're, you have some other intention. It's like being on a jury of nine people and you're the only, you think you're the only voice that matters. It's a good exercise for everybody in humility to be on a, on a board where we're, we're usually, yeah, our opinion's the most important, but it's a 5-4. All of us can attest to that. And I mean, I have to applaud Cameron Jenkins, who spent two or three years being the liaison and learning and going out of his way and on his own. These things, it's not like this stuff isn't available to you, Vera. You're trying to place the burden on the administration to do your homework. It's not fair. And it takes away from their ability to do their jobs. And it continues and it continues and it needs to stop. Or, you know, maybe you need to step down if you can't be trained. I don't know, Vera, you have to look in the mirror and answer that. And you have to be elected again if you want to continue. But I, I think it's a uh, it needs to be said, and I'm saying it. And I tried to early on help you, uh, 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 Steve and Kat, and there was a little problems at first, but they're, they're responding as adults to learning what we're supposed to be doing and, and doing it. And that's all I'm going to say at this point. I passed to Bob, I see his hands up. My suggestion is that we vote on this right now. <laughs> get instead of discussing it all night so i think you know it's something we can take care of right away so marissa i don't know that yeah so all right. if this is something that we feel as a full board we would like steve to provide to us outside of his regular duties let's do a um a roll call vote in regards to your determination and how you want to proceed. Would that be acceptable, Stephen? Or is that not allowed like that? I don't know the process you, like that. I'm, so, I'm going to jump in, Steve, real quick. Um, yeah. The process at this point is 
someone needs to make a motion to direct the business administrator to provide a detailed report. Someone has to second that motion. If there is no second, the motion doesn't move forward. If you get a second, then you do your vote. What if we don't, what if the majority of the board does not want Steve to do that? Like, that's what I was going to ask the for then us to vote, vote. Then you vote no on the motion. Okay. Vote Perfect. no on the motion fails. Okay. Awesome. That's exactly what I was looking forward to. All right. Thank you. If someone would please, um, uh, a motion is requested to invoke the business administrator to provide this additional point report for travel expenses. I'll make that motion. Okay. Okay, Bob has made the motion. Is there a second? This is your chance, Vera. Okay. okay. Yeah. There is no second. Therefore, the motion does not carry. The motion does not move forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate your guidance with that. Thank you. Uh, the other item in new business was the cannabis. Did we have an individual on the board who was interested in putting their name out into that as a school board member? I'm willing to, to join the committee. Okay, thank you. We appreciate that, and we appreciate you being the uh, eyes and ears on that committee to bring information to and from. Sounds good. I'll do my best. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other new business that needs to be discussed at this point in time? I just have one question. Are we planning on going back to in-person meetings in September, being as our kids are going back? So that's a really good question. Um, we are working with Steve and Albert and Vera to discuss the abilities to do so. Steve and Vera are donating um, some items to uh, allow us the technological ability to stream and hear voices, you know, for the, so that everybody can understand what we're doing in the meetings if we do go back into a physical format and not necessarily a virtual format like we're in right now. So we are working towards that. We did table it obviously for this meeting because we didn't have the ability technology wise to do it, nor did we have the equipment at that point in time. So we are setting up a meeting. Um, Joe has sent out an email to um, those that we discussed at our work session and we will be discussing the possibilities and if this is gonna happen, when it will, you know, we'll start talking about when it will start and then we'll discuss it at length in our workshop session next month. Uh, Vera, I see your hands up. Vera. She's muted. Vera, did you want to discuss something? Could be a mistake. Oh, okay. Maybe it's okay. I just didn't want to not. Okay, I see the hands down now. Okay, if there's nothing further to discuss um, in regards to new business, we'll move this forward. Are all distributions out? I assume so. I'll then open this up to public comment on non-agenda items. Vera, is your hand up because you want to say something? Are you, is, is she... Ms. Donahoe, are you aware that we cannot hear anything you are saying? I don't see the indicator on my screen that you're actually muted, but we can't hear anything you're saying. Hmm. Okay. As, as one of the hosts, I, I don't see any, I don't see her being muted. She's having some kind of technical problem. Yes, yeah, she's just having that as well. Unfortunately, we're unable to hear you. I don't know. I mean, I don't see that you're, I don't know if it's uh the volume's down. She's writing. You can there's a picture now. There's an image, isn't there? We can't do that. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's a 
picture of her, but nothing. I'm not sure. Um, if you would like to try to like jump out here and jump back in, maybe that'll work. Call, call on the phone, the phone number. So if Albert were to, he would phone say, number. to log out and log back in and see if it corrects itself. Yeah, I would log out and log back in. Perfect. Hopefully that'll help. So we'll, we'll pause until she comes back. So I don't want to not give her the opportunity to speak on something that she was planning to speak on. Is anybody else, does anyone else have anything that they want to bring up during this time? Public comment on a non-agenda item. Just uh, how I would now? just like to ask, oh, yes, Mr. Mercer, I had more new business going. when you have a chance. I have uh, more new business. It, it, well, you, let, let just forget what I was saying, go to back to Vera. Um, when I was first as a uh, teaching ESL, I had emergency certification, I was not fully certified, but I did teach five days a week so my question is for the upcoming school year will our uh, teacher who's working towards her certification as i had been doing will she be doing the same working uh seeing her students every day which is uh, legally what we're required to do so could you give me an update on that please well obviously vera i'm not giving you individually an update on that topic uh, again you're a member of a governing body, the Board of Education of Delanco. So it's important to emphasize that when I give an update, I'm giving it to the full board uh, or to the public or whatever other group. When it comes to this topic, uh, I have shared a pretty significant amount of information with the board over time. What I can say is that when we brought Donna Healy on board, who's doing an excellent job, uh, she already started the process of going from a three-day schedule to a five-day schedule that she was developing. So even though she is on a three-fifths schedule as, a, as an employee, 0 0.6 FTE, she, um, she is making it work with a five-day schedule so that each day is a partial day. So if, if it pleases the board, that's my response. And I believe we heard it before, Joe, and thank you very much. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. So she's going to be teaching Monday through Friday. Each student will get ESL one day uh, for the five days. Is that correct? I, I'm just not, sorry. That, that when I said five days a week, I am referring to Monday through Friday. Uh, I'm not going to make any jokes about Saturday and Sunday, but yes, she will be working Monday. Oh, through that's Friday. great. That's As great. for students, each student has different needs. Vera, you're well aware of this as an ESL teacher. So when a student has different needs, that does not mean that they're gonna be seen for the same amount of time, same amount of periods each week and so on and so forth. So, and again, I, I, it would definitely not be appropriate for me to talk about the schedule of an individual student or, or any groups of students at, at this stage. I know what you mean, like the, the uh, beginners, they get double periods, but any student, no matter what their level must be seen every day, Monday through Friday, that's, and you're saying that's going on. So I'm happy to hear that. My other um, question is um, for Mr. Mersinger as treasurer, when was the last time you were bonded? What year was that? I think you got this email already. Did we not? No, the, um, this Mr. Byrne said he was going to ask, but he well, did not tell me. He so, said he was going to inquire so about just, that. Just to give the board a history of this, because this is a very, very old question. Years ago, when Joey and D'Angelo was the business administrator, we had a treasurer that we paid about $5,000 a year to. At that time, the board decided it was worthwhile to remove the treasurer as a position and have me just take on the treasurer duty. So at that time, uh, I would work with the BA and serve as the treasurer with no additional compensation. There, there was zero added to my salary for this responsibility. And whether I was bonded or not, that, that's an excellent question. I, I was not bonded for any of the years until more recently when Steve Burns and I talked about it. So 
Steve is my fourth business administrator I've worked with, and this is the first time this has been discussed. So I will, so, I will be okay. bonded as of 21, 22. So um, I'm glad that, you know, I hope people don't think this is micromanaging when I try to make sure that the district is, a, is following uh, state regulation. Well, it's, it's important to note that me being bonded or Steve being bonded doesn't necessarily protect the district as much as it protects us. Steve, can you provide any elaboration on that? You know, it, yeah, it, it provides protection for both of us, uh, both, both sides in some ways. Um, you know, I, I've never seen it used, uh, but a lot of times it's used if money goes missing, uh, something of that nature. And so that's a situation, obviously, the district nor an individual, such as myself or you, would ever want to be in, in ta you know, in that, that situation. But usually it's used in a situation where money goes missing. At least, at least that's what I've always heard. And uh, I've never seen it ever used or known of anyone who's ever actually had to use it. Okay, my other question is, um, Barclay, we're going to have to, I guess, give them a contract right away since we have to apply. We have to be in compliance. You're micromanaging. That's you're not my, your job. Micromanaging. I'm following. I'm trying to make sure we're following state law. You, there's no contract. Micromanaging. <laughs> we have administrators Vera, this was, to do that. Vera, this was discussed by Vicky at length to us in email and at a past meeting that there is not a contract with Barclay. Can I explain for one second? You may, please. Thank you. I don't have a contract with Staples. I don't have a contract with you know certain vendors. Barclay provides us, you know, our bond, you know, our bonded insur you know, insurance. It's like five hundred dollars. It's under the quote threshold. It's simply that's that's all it is. There's no legal reason why we have to have a contract with them. The contract is the purchase order itself, actually, from a legal standpoint. So if I was ever opened for the contract, I would provide the PO. The PO is a legitimate contract with any vendor. But there's no contract specifically that, you know, detailing the relationship between Barclay and us. It's simply a purchase, just like purchasing paper clips or any other purchase. It's well under the quote threshold. There's no need to get a second quote uh, from a legal standpoint. And, and that's, it's as simple as that. From, from the broker of records, it's a completely different situation you brought up earlier. Um, we don't use them currently as a broker of records. From my knowledge, we use Brown & Brown for the healthcare insurance broker, and we use uh, the GIF, obviously, as our insurance. I don't, I, don't have any rec I don't have any knowledge of an actual insurance broker for general insurance of that nature. Thanks, Mr. Burns. Okay, are there any other public comments on non-agenda items? Okay, I'll close that. Is there a need for executive session? I did not see that there was a need. Yeah, Harry, you had a public comment on a non-agenda item? I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, you did. I just wanted to, with, with, with both 50 years in education and having run business, there are certain standard operating procedures that are just that. They're not they're not there to trick someone. They're not there to, you know, aha, look what we got away with. They're just perfunctory um, ways in which with the integrity of a board and the integrity of an administration, you move forward and you do business. And sometimes, uh, you know, doing due diligence is a board reading the information that's provided to us daily through the school boards association that points out things such as in new jersey there is a shortage of um, esl teachers special ed teachers science teachers math teachers and so what happens is districts do the best they can and the smaller the district the more difficult it is to cut and paste because you don't have full-time people you have 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.8. So I think we need to do our um, education of ourselves and hopefully that can get done as a board of the whole. And um, that's what I'm looking forward to the board of the whole that we're working as a nine person body with the intent of once again, keeping our eye on our goal, which is for the improvement. Thank you.
Thank you. All right, if there's nothing further, I don't believe that there was discussion on a need to go into executive session. I don't know. Stephen and I discussed this earlier uh, and if there were a need, uh, typically I would send an email to the board and say, let's be sure to discuss X, Y, and Z in executive. Uh, we, did, we did not see a need. Okay, wonderful. Um, then I would now make, I'm, I would request a motion to adjourn, please. I will gladly make a motion. Thank you, Phil. Second? I'll second, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Any questions or comments in regards to this adjournment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Opposed? Sorry, I said them out of order. Motion carries. Please, thank you for this. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Yeah, have a good night.